Hyperopia Anatomy Before we can describe hyperopia, let's compare the eyeball to a camera for better understanding. When we take a picture, light after reflecting from an object enters the camera and passes through. First, a transparent glass in front of the aperture of the camera, then secondly, a lens that helps us in focusing light rays, and lastly, a film on which the light is focused for a clear picture. Eye is somewhat similar, as when we see an object, the light after reflection from that object enters our eye through, firstly, cornea, the transparent curved part of the eye, then, secondly, through the crystalline lens that helps us in focusing the light rays, and lastly, the retina, light-sensitive receptor cells in the posterior part of the eyeball, on which light is focused for a clear image. Definition of hyperopia. It is a form of refractive error, inability to refract, bend, focus the light rays properly, in which parallel rays of light, i.e. coming from the distinct object, after entering the eye, are focused behind the retina with accommodation, eye muscles at rest. Key features. This refractive error has three key features. Images formed behind the retina. In normal people, image has to be focused on the retina for it to be clear. Parallel light rays, the rays that only come from objects at six meters or beyond, must be used for assessment, as when objects come closer than six meters, light rays start to diverge, changing their focus. This is why we place Snellen's chart at six meters. I must be at rest. Just like a DSLR camera's focusing power can be changed by rotating its zoom lens, eye changes its focusing power by changing the shape of its lens with the help of contraction and relaxation of certain muscles located inside the eyeball. These muscles must be at rest to correctly access the eye's focusing power. This is also the reason why we use cycloplegic or muscle paralyzing drops before estimating the amount of refractive error. Misnomer. Both hyperopia and myopia have abnormal distant vision i.e., they cannot focus distant objects clearly. But the unique thing about hyperopia is that if these patients increase the power of their lens by contraction of certain intraocular muscles, they can focus the image accurately on their retina. This will result in excessive and continuous use of intraocular, ciliary muscles in order to keep the image focused on the retina, resulting in pain. Also, when they try to see a near objects, their eyes will require even more focusing power, which these muscles can no longer provide, hence causing near objects to become blurry. So, a lot of hyperopic patients, not all, with less degree of hyperopia, will say that they see distant objects clearly, but they have pain or discomfort in their eyes, or their eyes get tired, and also, near vision is mostly not that good. Hence, these patients are mistakenly called farsighted. Cause 1. Curvature Curvature of cornea or lens is flatter than normal. 2. Axial Short axial length of eye. 3. Index Decrease in refractive index, i.e. light bending, focusing power of the lens, e.g. in cortical cataract. 4. Positional, posterior displacement of lens, e.g. after trauma. 5. Aphakia, absence of lens in eye, therefore eye cannot focus light rays on retina. Types 1. Total hyperopia, it is the total refractive error, calculated after complete cycloplegia, intraocular muscle paralysis, induced by certain drops. 2. Latent hyperopia, Amount of hyperopia corrected by the focusing power produced due to normal tone of intraocular ciliary muscles. It is usually one diopter. 3. Manifest hyperopia. It is the remaining portion of hyperopia, divided into facultative. Amount of hyperopia corrected by the focusing power produced due to active contraction of ciliary muscles. Absolute. Amount of hyperopia that cannot be corrected even by contraction of ciliary muscles. Clinical features. 
Symptoms Eye straining or discomfort Asthenopia Including eye tiredness, pain, headache or mild photophobia Blurred vision with eye straining When muscle contraction attempts but fails to correct hyperopia Blurred vision only When refractive error is high and cannot be corrected at all by muscle contraction efforts Inward deviation of eye Convergent squint Normal patients require to move their eyes inwards while focusing near objects. This is enhanced in hypermetropic patients, causing their eye to move inwards intermittently or constantly. Signs Small eyeball Corneal diameter may be small. Retinal exam might show false changes due to distortion of image when hyperopia exceeds 5 diopters. Diagnosis Retinoscopy a handheld device that throws light in the eye and allowing us to observe its movements and reflection, hence helping to confirm the refractive error. A-scan, a small ultrasound probe that throws ultrasound waves in the eyeball and then detects their reflections or echo timings, calculating the eyeball length. Note, at birth, all eyes are hyperopic, plus 2.5 to plus 3 diopter i.e. light is focused behind the retina. As the eyeball grows and at about 6 to 7 years age, eyeball is of normal size and light is now focused on the retina or emetropic. In some people, it continues to grow causing myopia or light is focused in front of retina. Treatment Unlike the camera, maximum two-third focusing in an eye is done by transparent front part cornea, while the rest, one-third, is done by the lens. So while treating these patients, we have to increase the focusing power of the eye so that the image is formed on the retina instead of behind it. This can be done by using either a converging lens, e.g. non-surgical treatment, glasses, contact lenses, or some surgical procedure. Surgical treatment making the central part of the cornea more curved. This include different methods that were changed and advanced depending on reduction of side effects and recovery time and improvement of degree of vision. PRK, photorefractive keratectomy. Remove corneal epithelial cells by a solution. Then use laser to reshape cornea, i.e. making it steeper and then apply a bandage contact lens. Side effects include pain and recovery is in one week at least. It corrects 2 diopter hyperopia. LASIK Laser in situ keratomeliosis corrects up to 4 diopter, a famous and frequently performed surgery nowadays. In this procedure, a device, keratome, slices a flap of cornea 160 micrometer. Laser is applied to change the corneal shape and then the flap is repositioned. Advantages. Advantages over other procedures. Absence of post-operative pain. More rapid visual rehabilitation. Conductive keratoplasty. It involves getting radio frequency energy to corneal stroma, causing change in its shape can correct low to moderate hyperopia.